Brian here from quantlabs.net. Today I am going to show you, um, just found out about this through the likes of Ernie Chan. Dr. Ernie Chan has told me about this uh, package that's available for Python uh, for FXCM Forex trading. And I'm going to show you how to use some of the uh, resources available in this package and to get you up and running with um, your Forex broker. First of all, it's really important that people understand that uh, FXCM does not take U.S. customers like all the others. Um, well, not all the others, but uh, quite a number of them. And just wanted to let you know about that. So the first thing we got to do is um, algorithmic trading. We are using uh, the Python, FXCM, Python, I'm sorry, FX. CM PY Pi Python package and it's delivered on REST and there's a wrapper for Python. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm not going to go into obviously teaching you Python here, but I'll just show you how to get up and running. All right. So first things first is uh, we have, as I said, this package here, the intro. And uh, if you go into my uh, interpreter here, Couple things. Um, I'm using. Uh, let me just pull up another one here. Uh, okay. Let me pull up a another um, terminal here. So I'm using Python 3.64 on my Mac. Okay. And um, what we're doing here is. Uh, I use Python 3 and pip 3. So that's the package manager for Python. So in order to do this, uh, I'm using pip install fxcm py here. Uh, I've already got it installed, but uh, just for kicks. So you can see it's all been satisfied here. So that everything's been installed properly. Now, here's the part that gets a little hairy. So we have here our tokens. So when you go over to uh, FXCM and FXCM.com, what you can do is you can go into a practice account, set it up, and uh, I believe if you go under Trade station is where I went. Actually, let me just show you where I'm thinking. Okay. So if you come under, um, uh, where'd I go? Okay. So if you come under here under the GitHub, and uh, where you can get that is right here, GitHub. So github.com fxcm slash fxcm pi repository. And what we're going to do here is, uh, once you get into that, we want, obviously, the FXCM Pi. Now, there's a Java. Um, I would probably, if you're starting out, I'd probably stick with Python. It's an easy language. So, first things first. This is where you got to do go to create your demo account and get your token that you need. So, in here, you'll see all the different ways to connect into, uh, Python, uh, into FXCM. The Python wrapper is probably the easiest way you can get around that. Um, you can see here you can use all these other popular uh, methodologies to connect into Zipline, QS Trader, Quant Connect for the platforms. Um, there's other ways I've got my own courses, you know. So uh, what we want to do is uh, uh, let me think here. How did I do it? I think you just come under Python and uh, I think you have to come under open an account, but you want a practice account. Fill in all your details, uh, however you want to get delivered, trade now, and what you'll get is in there, you will need to look for uh, where to find the, the token. And uh, once you get that, it's quite a lengthy number, probably 20 characters or so. What you'll need to do is, uh, there's a number of ways to do it. So you can supply a variable 
uh, as token and connect using this way uh, F so let me just show you how to do it there's a number of ways let me just clear this so if I go into Python 3 the interpreter and I install the package the, Py the FXCMY Py pack uh, so we do um, a, in a typical there's different ways to go about it. if I go back into here into this uh, FXCM Py Python package um, we've done the install now this is there's numerous ways you can configure your um, file the configuration file so the first and easiest way is in my case I'm uh, you can do it either through Jupyter or in my case what I'm doing here to keep it really simple just run Python 3 or Python whatever your interpreter is just run import for the XCM FXC and uh, Py package and here you'll need to enter in the uh, token so in this case you go token equals whatever your token is and then you continue along here uh, to uh, run these extra commands so I'm not going to do that but what they have set up is if you go into the github now you can set up a configuration file so if I quit here show where my so if I just go into my Python directory here and FXCM okay so here I've got my configuration file which is exactly set up like this and then I also uh, run a uh, log file on the on the uh, interaction with FXCM so what we can do in the configuration file is we just uh, edit it create it and then we just put in these parameters now here for the log file I just put in the current directory which is just log underscore file equals um, either a period for the current file that's because it's the name of the and you also have to include the name of the log file so I'll just call it uh, log underscore level equals error log file equals and then no quotes I just say fxcm dot log and then the other one here is you just call access underscore token and then that token that you're going to retrieve no different as if you were to put it here in the interpreter so once you get all that set up this is probably the hardest thing uh, to set up really so when you uh, rerun the interpreter obviously you have to do the import fxcm pi uh, fxcm pi there we go in this case I'm going to run that configuration file for the fxcm and you only have to do this once every time you run F the fxcm pi package now it is kind of slow at the beginning um, and it should connect so, so now it's connected um, how do I know well we can run this print all the instruments voila so these are all the available instruments in FEXCM currently okay well, the currency pairs we've got um, some indexes uh, we also have some commodities these are CFDs and obviously these two are gold and silver all right so knowing that uh, let's check out some data so we know this kind of works so now what we're gonna do I want you to understand that this data object is a data frame okay it's a pandas data frame so no different with other data frames that you may have seen me use we can do a head and a tail so here's our data so here's our date uh, bid open bid close bid high bid low ask open ask high ask low and then the tick quantities so this is a tick data it looks like uh, by the minute okay so knowing that we can also do the tail as well uh, report back all the last I think it's 10 or whatever the amount is
Now here I'm not going to show you this um, to do the uh, charting. You, hopefully you'll see that, get that running either at Seaborn or Matplotlib or in my case chart director that I use, which I kind of prefer to be honest. So we've got all the basics running, which is good. And uh, if you go back to my blog here, um, again, the title is Demo of FXCM Python Package for Forex Trading. So here we have more usage instructions. So we've gone over the connecting streaming market data. I'm not going to go into the historical. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, but um, let me just show you. Uh, just uh, right here. So the server connection. Um, we are able to do our usual connection. Uh, we can see continuing along in this particular uh, server connection, see if that's the case, if it's uh, the status of it, which is true. Uh, we can also get our account ID. Now, mine is just a demo account, so you're not going to go very far with that. Um, then we have a demo account, set a new default account. Uh, if you have open orders, I'll show you more detail of that. Obviously, we haven't done any orders yet. Um, OCO orders. And uh, I've already shown you the instruments. We do that. So going back to my blog post, which is now we're going to look at streaming market data, which is right here. Now, as I said, I'm not going to go into the historical data. It's pretty straightforward. Um, but the status is, is that, as I showed before, we have the ability to um, have a data frame with columns of bid open, bid close, bid high, bid low, ask open to close, ask high, ask low, and tick quantity. But you'll notice here that it is, uh, is it by the minute. And it's by the minute, as we hinted at. So we can set our frequency here by, I guess, candle data if we wanted for the bar data. Um, so let me just try running that. And uh, while we're here, this is for historical data. So let me just try running this. Uh, I just want to show you, confirm that this all works. We're going to get the um, hourly date on the Euro USD. And there you go. So that's all. Uh, hourly or is that yeah that looks hourly okay and uh, if we want candle data now this is five minute data um, five one minute bars okay so nothing exciting so there you go Five minute bars, uh, and then the same data as before. Now we can specify starting a range on dates. So let's put this whole thing in here from July 15th, 2017 to August 1st, 2017. Get the candle period of daily, and then the range of the start and stop. Pretty straightforward. Now I have not gotten this far before. Um, I think uh, I might not like all of that at once. Start date. Oh, I gotta get the um, import some modules here. Okay, so we gotta import these two. So we gotta import the pandas and date time for it to be seen. So now we are going to do, um, yeah, previous one here. Okay, so there you go. So here's our date range of uh, 716 all the way up to August 1st with the standard uh, columns that we've already highlighted. Data visualization, I'm not, it's not going to work. <laughs> not my interpreter. Get candles. Again, we can show that if we want it. So that's all the historical data. So now, back to my blog, I'm going to show you uh, the streaming data. which is this one. All right, so we've got all our standard um, packages and modules imported already into this 
interpreter session. So we're going to subscribe to Euro, US dollar, get our subscribe. I think there's a bug here because I couldn't get this working for some reason. Oh, and subscribe to that pair. Now we can get the status. It's very simple, much simpler than other ones that you've seen me work with. Get prices. Um, so this will get the last set. Um, looks like last. Uh, what's the frequency on this? What's the tick data? It looks like. Um, then we get the last price again. Tick data bid ask high and low. With the timestamp. Okay. And uh, the data type is float sixty four. So I can unsubscribe. So if I try to get that same pair, because I'm no longer subscribed, probably blank. Yep, blank. Okay, I'm not going to go into the callback methodology, so you can just call them back every time something comes in um, and print it out. Um, but uh, I think that's pretty straightforward. All right, so the next step is I'm not going to worry about data tables, um, and then I'm going to move into market orders and entry orders. Um, so what we're doing now is we're going to get all the available open positions, which shouldn't be any because we've, well, we haven't placed any yet. So we'll place the first one here, uh, which is a sell order of 100 on the Euro USD. It takes a while for the server to respond. Now remember it's using REST. So now we go order, now we're doing a buy. US Japanese yen 200. So now we're able to see our open positions from the full data. As you can see here, we got the visible PL. That's really important. I find the date stamp, how, uh, when at the price it was opened, uh, gross PL, currency, Brazilian's close, and then our account information and uh, the quantity. Okay, so let me just see if, uh, okay, well, we're losing now. <laughs> okay, so now we are going to um, place the actual order, I believe. Place the, a more complex order. This is a more, let me just enter it in. Let's see what happens. It's much, much easier than uh, other, like Java or whatnot. So we have placed our order on the US Japanese yen. It's a buy, true. Rate, so this is our rate that we want to put in. Uh, is it in pips? Yes. Here's the amount that we buy in, time and force, good to cancel, order type at market, and the limit of a dollar twenty or one twenty. Okay, so um, as we know about data frames, um, so if I go back to open, get all the open positions, we'll see three. So all the data I've shown before. Now, the one thing you'll note on this particular row is the trade ID. Okay, uh, seems to work pretty good. So what we gotta do is get open position and then highlight the um, column, or sorry, the row that we want. So obviously that's trade ID, this guy right here. And then see it pretty well works right here. Okay, um, so we can now close the, uh, all the trades. Get closed trade IDs. So I don't think these have been closed yet. So those are all the closed ones on the account because I've done some previous testing. Um, so we are going to change the market order so we're going to do this on the last previous one. So we have a new trade ID. Okay, that's the previous one. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the trade stop limit. Uh, trade is in pips false. Is stop no and change the rate to 115. 
Boom. Pretty simple. So if we look at the open positions again, um, should be able to see that change. Uh, so that was our second one on, I believe, this one right here. Yeah, so here's our limit. Okay, so now we can close the positions or close our trading, trade ID. So we're going to close up the trade ID, the last one on a thousand. Um, yeah, so that's our amount. So we're going to fully close the position on the amount, trade ID, and again, we can look at our. Uh, overall positions was still open. So our third one that we did before is no longer uh, available. It's no longer listed because it's, well, it's closed, right? So we can also close all positions for that particular pair in case we have to panic or something for whatever reason. Uh, get open position. So we should only have one more position open, which we do. Okay. So let's do a close all. Okay. Now when we do a get open position, it will be nothing. It'll be blank. So that's the case. So we've closed them all. Okay. So uh, let's see what all our closed positions are. Here's our PL, how they did on each position. And the gross PL, they're all big losers. Um, Timestamp when they're closed and when they're open. Okay, uh, so here's the class for the uh, FXCM underscore open underscore position. So let's see what's going on here. We have our open position, nothing. So we can create a new market sell order, US or sorry, Euro USD 100 quantity. Okay, so let's see what our open position is. Now this is just the def definition of the um, object name. To get open, one can use open position. So I think we only have one column in here. So we're only going to get the one row, the first row and the only only position. And we're going to sign it the trade ID because that's what we're asking for here by getting the open trade ID. So now we can open a new position using that trade ID. So if I type in position, there's our position, but we have to print it out. Now remember, this is the data type. So here's our position information that we had before. Okay, so we can get amount, which I believe would be here. I'm sure this will be further explained, obviously, in the documentation, which is pretty simple. Uh, right here. Um, the API documents will explain all that, but these are just simple examples and they're pretty good examples if you ask me. Okay, so we've done that. Position, so we've printed the position. Okay, so we've presented the amount. We can get the currency pair, get underscore currency, and then we can position close. Boom. And for the other way, the previous methodology, then we have nothing left open because we've closed it. All right, so that's that. Um, the next section, back to the blog, is this one. We're going to do entry orders. Now, remember, we're doing all of this in Python. Makes life a lot easier. Okay, so now we're doing entry orders. So what we're going to do here. Okay, so we are going to get all our current orders. Let's 
probably none available. Um, if there were, pre present the same thing that we've seen before. Hmm. Okay. Let me just create one. Uh, placing entry order. Market order, sorry. So I'll just do one here. What was before? Go back to entry order. See what kind of entry or get orders we can see. Previously was blank. Still blank. Get order. I did con get order. Oh, I think. I'm sure I glossing this over. Market order. Okay. So we get our order. Connection open. We'll put a con create market sell order. Let me do it this way. Okay, so we have available. Again, open positions. We've done this. So we have two positions on. The question is this is a different type of entry order. Get orders. Get order position. Get open positions. Let's see the difference. After connecting, FX collects all existing orders, list or data frame. So we have connect get orders. That's coming back blank. Is this a bug? No. So if this was get order, no. If I put in an order, no. Get order ID. Placing entry orders. This may help. Create entry order. Okay. Okay, so we have a position. I think it's the same as the other brokers. Orders and positions. Uh, let me think here. So we've got placing... Entry orders are placed via the create for a detail. So there's a difference between orders and positions, and I'm not going to get into, but it's probably similar to another broker I've worked on. Um, usually it's an order, uh, but you can have multiple positions within an order. So here's our order. So we're doing the same thing as before. Okay, so if I was to do, this should work, yeah, which we did, and then we're going to get as a list, so this comes up as, there we go, so there's our list that we were wanting, so we got our order placed, so now we're going to change our order, so we're going to get an order ID, okay, so we know our order ID is that. Okay, so here's the details of the order. So we have order ID equals that order ID. Is stop in pips? Yes. Is limit in pips true? Limit 10, 110. Stop at negative 1. Have to look into what this negative 1 means. If it means that's the order, stop order. But that, again, will be in the API documents. We're just testing the, uh, seeing if this works or not. Um, I'm sure I forgot something here. So we're changing the order. Okay, so we've changed the order and saying error. Let's see what we got here. Data response error, FXCMY, FX reports on error, session ID, request, order price did not pass validation. Okay, I'm going to assume it does some kind of order. So, okay, there's our order info. So we can delete an order. 
get order ID. So is there one? Okay, so there's only one. So we will try to delete the last order ID, which looks like we did. This may come up uh, with nothing. Yep, nothing. Okay. And we can track all the old orders, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, it looks okay, that message there. Is that it? No, there's no error message. Okay, so that's pretty well it. So it's a lot more straightforward um, than any other broker I've seen. I'm not going to go into OCO orders. Um, one cancels the other. It's like a chain of orders that you can have. But I'm not going to get into that. It gets a little complicated when you're starting out. But uh, you can definitely... Uh, do everything in Python now with the broker if you want to use FXCM, which is kind of cool. All right, so uh, that will and should simplify uh, if you don't want to use any of the other brokers I got going on listed. Talk to you later.